Can you all turn with me to Acts? Blessed Heavenly Father, Lord, you said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Lord, we just claim that promise. We pray for your spirit to be with us, to give us understanding of your word, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Of course, this will be class participation. Amen. So if I ask some questions, please answer me. And... You know, we'll go from there. First question, why are you here? Mm. No hands went up. <laughs> okay, John. Love. Love. The wit. Forsake not the assembly. Forsake not the assembly. Tate. In church or in the world? Okay, let me. Yeah, good why are you here in this building, in church? Okay, Tate. <laughs> then Kamani, then Gerald. Spiritual recharge, come on. Hey, that's a spiritual purpose. Spiritual purpose. Gerald. Draw closer to God. To draw closer to God. Anybody else? Fellowship. 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 Sister Johnson. I'm here because I know too is a Sabbath, and I've been holy, I keep it holy. Mm, to remember the Sabbath and to keep it holy. Anybody else? Amen. Why are you here? Du Ducaria. Direction and righteousness. For direction and righteousness. Mm -hmm. Charles. More spiritual enlightenment. More spiritual enlightenment. Berlin. Eternal life. Eternal life. Um, Garfield. Then Nita. I want to say holy convocation. Holy convocation. Okay, Nita. Obedience to God. Obedience to God. Why are you here? Next question. Do you expect something from church? Mm. If so, what is it? Any hands? Do you expect something when you come in this building? Charles. First of all, we should have our own individual devotion with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And then, when we come to church, it'll be a big salad bowl. We can all receive a blessing from each other. So you expect a blessing from each other. Tate. Expect to hear the truth. Expect to hear the truth. John. Chuck what Chuck said. Anybody else? Do you expect something from church? Yeah. Gerald. Peace of mind. Peace of mind. Acceptance, come on. A clean, temple. a clean temple. Anybody else? What do you expect when you come to church? Sister Johnson. I like to interact with the crowd. I like to interact with people. I'm a lover of the crowd. I'm a lover of the crowd. I like to come. You want a fellowship. You like to interact with people. Gerlene. No harassment. No harassment? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anybody else? Do you have expectations when you come to church? Victoria. Sister Victoria. Better understanding of the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Mm. Anybody else? Tate. Get my, my toes stepped on. <laughs> <laughs> to get your toes stepped on in a, in a spiritual way, right? Yeah, yeah. In a, a reproving <laughs> in way. In a good way. <laughs> in a good way. Are you satisfied with your walk? Y'all don't have to answer this, but just think on it. Ponder it. Are you satisfied with where you're at? This is called the OK Plateau. Mm. Have y'all ever heard of this before? No. So I'm going to explain to you what it is. So here you have skill, here you have time, here you have expert, amateur, and the OK Plateau. So most of y'all are drivers. And you've probably been driving for a long time. Are you better at driving? Mm -hmm. Are you exceptional at driving? Mm -hmm. Or are you just okay? Okay. How about typing? How many words can you type per minute? 75, 60. How long have you been doing it? Mm, so you didn't get better, you got... 
it. But it's like skill with time, you should eventually get better. Like with whatever you're doing, you should get better at it. But they had this okay plateau is where people get comfortable where uh -oh. I'm good enough. Uh -oh. Mm. Uh -oh. Like in driving, when you first start out driving, you're pretty rusty and you don't know what you're doing. But as you get better, you get to a place to where you're comfortable. I can handle myself on the road. Mm. Right? You might not be an expert to where your NASCAR or to your, where your Formula One, but you're okay with your skills mm. in driving. So with the OK Plateau, have we reached an OK Plateau with our Christianity? Are we trying to get to this expert level or are we just OK and comfortable with where we're at because I'm OK with it? Uh oh, make a point, brother. Just think on it. The name of this study is called Ordinary Christianity. Let's get into it. So in Acts 1, I don't know what your, the title of Acts is in your Bible. Can somebody read the title of Acts in their Bible? Like, do you have a, a chapter title? Does it just say Acts or does it say Acts of the Apostles? Acts of the Apostles. Mm. Oh, this is a good, this is a good word. So first question. Well, let me, let's read first. I'll start in verse 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he would, after that he would through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. So my first question, what is an apostle? Somebody with a concordance, can you look that up? What is an apostle? Someone who works for God. Anybody else? Give me the Greek definition. A disciple of righteousness. Have to win souls for Christ. That's what an apostle is. Anybody else? What is an apostle? So while they're looking that up, are we apostles? We should be. We're supposed to be. Yes. Come on. One who is sent off. Anybody else? Uh, Go ahead, Gerald. Uh, a delegate. Mm. A messenger. A messenger. Right. One sent forth with orders. One sent forth with orders. Are we sent forth with orders? Oh, yes. yes. You know what a delegate is, right? It's a person that represents somebody else or something else. Mm -hmm. So are we apostles? The answer would be yes. Oh, yes. Mm. What's the difference between apostles and disciples? Well, apostles, technically, anybody could be an apostle, but a disciple is disciplined in the training of Christ. is is more specific, if I can give you my layman's definition of it. So one's a teacher and one's a student. One's a teacher and one's a student. You can put it like that. Y'all agree with that definition? The difference between an apostle and a disciple. Okay, so in Acts, let's read down. So back in verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye... But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power, 
After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So at verse 6, they ask Christ the question, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? So what do they mean by that? Physical kingdom. They wanted a physical kingdom. They wanted Christ to reign. They wanted to be his, you know, his commanders and chiefs and, and serving under him. But Christ's response was, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. Could they have been asking for the end of the world? Could they have been asking for God's kingdom to come down? And Christ's response was, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But in verse 8 he says, But ye shall receive power oh, yeah. after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So what does witness mean? Because in verse 8 he says, But ye shall receive power, and with that power I want you to be a witness. So it's not just the Holy Ghost just to have the Holy Ghost. That's right. It's ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So what is a witness? Like testimony. They're bearing their life as a testimony. They're bearing their life as a testimony. Go ahead, Tate. The concordance says a martyr <laughs> uh, record a record of witness. So hold on. Go, go ahead, Gerald. I was going to say, a witness in, in layman's terms is mm -hmm. someone who has personally witnessed and experienced something right. and can share it with somebody else. Right. Yeah. So Tay said he brought out one of the definitions is a martyr. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that? Mm. No. What's a martyr? <laughs> somebody who dies for something they believe in. So Christ said that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be martyrs unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and all Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Are y'all ready for that? Are, are we witnesses? <laughs> Not a word. Okay, we are. Thank you, sister. Somebody speaking up. Go with their faith. <laughs> Let's read down to, I'm going to start in, we're going to skip down some. Well, no, let's not, let's not. Continuing in verse 8, or in verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee. Why stand ye gazing up into heavens? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So which way did Jesus go into heaven? He went in the cloud. So how is he coming back? Please don't be deceived. Please don't be deceived. Verse 12. They then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus and Simon, Zelotus, I'm saying that right, yeah. and Judas, the brother of James. So. Back in verse 4, Christ said they had to do something. What was it? Wait. It was wait. They had to wait. Being assembled together, them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And what's the promise of the Father? The Holy Spirit. So now they waited. And they're still waiting. They're assembled together. They left after Christ left. Now you can think of, of how they are. Like they seen Christ ascending in the cloud. 
And the two men, which were probably angels, said, why are y'all staring up at the sky? This same Jesus is going to come back. So, in my opinion, the two men are saying, y'all need to get busy. Like, why are y'all waiting, staring at the sky? He's going to come back. It's cool. He already told you this. So in verse 14, it says, These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication, with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Now what's going on? They're in an upper room with all the disciples, with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers, and some other women. So what did they do when they got into this upper room? And how did they pray? One mm, with one accord. Okay. So delegate, as we said, specifically an ambassador of the gospel, officially a commissioner of Christ, an apostle, with miraculous powers. Do we have miraculous power? We have access to it. A messenger, he that is sent. So here's a quote from Acts of the Apostles. The church of God, the church is God's appointed agency for the salvation of men. It was organized for service. And its mission is to carry the gospel to the world. From the beginning, it has been God's plan that through his church shall be reflected to the world, his fullness and his sufficiency. So what should be reflected to the world through his church? His fullness and his sufficiency. What does that mean? Wow. How do you understand that? His character? By God's fullness and his sufficiency. What does that mean? If we're supposed to show it to the world, we should at least know what it means. <laughs> That's right. His character? What else? What about his sufficiency? What does that mean? His power. His power. The members of the church, those whom he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light, are to show forth his glory. Mm. The church is the repository of the riches of the grace of Christ. And through the church will eventually be made manifest even to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. The final and full display of the love of God. Yes. Are we doing this? Are we showing forth God's glory? Are we reflecting his fullness and his sufficiency? How do we reflect his fullness and sufficiency? Anybody got some ideas on that? <laughs> How do we reflect his fullness and his sufficiency? This is what the church is supposed to be doing. All right. So what about his sufficiency? And, and our testimony is testified of the power of God how it works in our lives. Okay. Do y'all agree with that? Mm -hmm. Amen. Anybody else want to add to that? Girlene. Yeah, when we pray, we should actually believe it. That's it. That's it. That's right. Absolutely. We can see that, and that's, that's how we do it. Yes. Like it's power. That's right. So if you're praying, go ahead, Gerald. I was going to say that last statement really says it all. What does all that mean? It, it is we are to fully display, display the love of God through our lives. And that, that is what will draw people you know, to God. Because God is love. And all that means is we will live our lives and our lives will be lives of love. Revealing the love of God. Mm, what Gerald said... Can I ask, are our lives loves? Are our lives a reflection of God's love? Can you say that about yourself? Can we say that? That my life is a reflection of God's love. Everywhere. Not just as I think Tay said in Sabbath school or Gerald said in Sabbath school, just at church and not on the job or just here and just not there. Is our lives a reflection of God's love everywhere? Amen. Amen. Testify. Right. Turn with me to Acts 2. Chapter 2. We'll start in verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Yes. 
and on one accord again in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like of like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So they were all what? Before that, before they was filled, what were they? They were all on one accord and in one place. So question, um, what does it mean to be on one accord? Be in agreement. So that would mean all of us would have to have one mind and agree on every point. Okay. Go ahead, Brian. I think it's more of uh, they had peace within. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because we're not going to agree on our point. You know what I'm saying? How come? Well, I mean, you might like red and I like blue or something. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking. I understand that, you know but saying? concerning so this. Concerning that. They were all on one accord, and but there was peace inside them mm -hmm. with what they believed. Okay. See, because we have That's faith it. in what we believe, but the the scripture said one man said, "Help my unbelief." So right. to believe is to have peace within, because you can't. If you ain't got no peace inside, you can't have peace with your brother. You can't That's right. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So they had that peace. The wit, then Garfield, then Tate. Okay. That's the unity. In other words, it's like the basketball. We're in the game. We're unified. So what if I want to reach people outdoors with basketball tournaments and you don't? Are we on one accord? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody doesn't have the same gift. Okay. Garfield. Then take in general. Satan has a group of folks that are one accord too. Absolutely. And their sole mission is to seek, kill, and destroy mm -hmm. the people of God. And, and he has many of them in, in agreement with him and doing that. So this is why God needs us to be in one accord. But uh, the uh, Greek says, and it's really already been said, but I'll read this. It says, with one passion. Mm. And this is talking spiritually. So, you know, Veronica mentioned that people may have different preferences. You know, James may like blue and John may right. like red. That, that's different. This is talking about what somebody said, the word the mission. 
the spiritual mission of the church. That's the passion. Uh, that's the sole reason for the church of God is the mission, the mm. gospel. Amen. Yeah. Be with. Uh, like, like you said, and I repeat, and you threw that in there. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. 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 Y
Mm. Right. <laughs> mercy. She said, she said we should deal with both knees. Of course, if you're able to. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. <laughs> Look at that. Don't do y'all want this experience? Yes. 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 Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yes. Amen. This is ordinary Christianity. <laughs> this is regular Christianity. Amen. Amen. What are we doing? Go with me to Acts 2. We're still in verse 2 or chapter 2. Let's go down to verse 38. So what's going on is after everybody hear them speaking in their own native tongue, some somebody says, oh, these men are drunk. Mm. So Peter rebukes them, right? And then down in verse... 38 it says then Peter said unto them repent after he rebukes them others ask well what do we have to do to be saved and Peter goes on and said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise is unto you and to your father and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many and other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. What's an untoward generation? Wicked. Wicked. Bent. Continually thinking evil. And 43, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by who? Are we apostles? Oh, yeah. And all that believed were together and had all things in common. Mm. And they and they continuing daily. Oh, I'm skipping. Sorry. Verse 45. And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Do y'all know the needs of the church? Mm. Do we know the needs of our sisters and our brothers? Are we supplying them? And they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people as the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Who added to the church daily? The Lord. Are signs and wonders a, are signs and wonders a sign of the Holy Ghost? So when it says it can be, <laughs> I like that. I like that half answer. It can be. I like that. Well, every time, signs and wonders. Are, signs and wonders. It, it, it is a proof positive that that person has the Holy Ghost. Mm. Is it? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> well done. We'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. So when it says they continued steadfastly, what does that mean? They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. I'll tell you what it means. Amen. To be earnest towards, to be constantly diligent. Are we constantly diligent in God's work? That word earnest means an intense conviction. Do we have an intense conviction to doing God's will, to seeking his pleasure as a whole, as an entire church? Do we have an intense conviction towards that goal of saving souls? We should be. Are we constantly diligent in serving God? We should be. Okay, next chapter. Acts 3. I guess you can read it up there, but we'll start in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked in alms? And Peter, fastening his, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. 
And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So, under, understand what Peter is saying. I don't have silver or gold, but such as I have give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So, is Peter saying that he has the power to make this man rise up and walk? Mm -hmm. yes? Yes, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Amen. I'm glad I didn't hear no, <laughs> no questionable answers. So in Acts 3, 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, and he leaping, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Mercy. Now, say that happened in this church. Uh -oh. <laughs> Somebody just came in here leaping, running around, happy, praising God. How would you feel about that? Amen. Now, well, a couple of amens. <laughs> a couple of amens. That's, that's serious suspicion. Amen. Be honest. John. If we already knew them and they had some help. Mm-hmm. Amen. Be honest. Be real. Like, how would you feel if somebody was in here leaping around, but had they said somebody just healed me and I haven't walked in thirty years? I leap around, brother. Leap around. Yeah, the ceiling's a little low, but watch your head. So, is healing the lame? A sign of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Y'all yes. <laughs> just, just don't want to work with me today. <laughs> Amen. So, next chapter. Acts 4, we'll just go down to verse 8. You can read it on the board if you want to. It's kind of small. You might not be able to see it. But Acts chapter 4, verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost... Yes. Said unto them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Now, this is because some folk had problems with Peter and John healing, healing this lame man. So Peter had to express himself and rebuke them. And in verse 10, we should all know this by heart. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which ye said and not of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Yes. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Turn with me. Let's scroll down to verse 27. Y'all there? Or I'll start in 26. The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, and this is Peter before the council, for of a truth against the holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. Now, here you have both Herod and Pontius Pilate, you have the Gentiles, and you have the people of Israel. You have people in power, you have people of influence, you have the Gentiles, and then you have people of the church. All of these people are against Peter in this situation. Are we ready to have all of these people against us? Are we ready to have people in power, people of influence, people in the church, people from the world against us? Verse 28. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak the word. With all what? Oh, amen. By stretching forth thine hand to heal 
and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Yeah. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken mm. where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. And they spake the word of God with what? Boldness. It's boldly preaching the sign of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Y'all yeah. didn't struggle with that one. <laughs> Next chapter. Oh, man. I'm running out of time. Okay, but a certain man named Ananias and Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was so, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And, I, and Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Mm. Okay. When was the last time you rebuked somebody of they sin and they fell dead right in front of you? <laughs> Never. Never. So why do y'all think this happened with Ananias? Why, why did God put this in the Bible? Nobody? Charles, why do you think this happened? And why is it, a, why is it recorded for us? Because I, I believe that if we, if we are an example, and, and we, we run into the same situation he ran into, we can review it. Things can happen like that. So why, so here's the thing when, so understand this, at this time, this is, the church is finally being planted. Veronica and Gerald. You got the, the, you got two acts going on in, in, mm -hmm. in the book of Acts. You got the acts of the apostles, mm -hmm. but you also got the acts of the Holy Ghost. Okay. What's the difference? One is physical and other spiritual. Okay. What's the difference? <laughs> are we not are we not both spiritual and physical okay Gerald yeah you notice that verse 3 um, that this is what they did wrong here in verse right. 3 it says they filled thine heart and they lied they lied the spirit. we have to go back before them because um, when everyone was in one accord that's important right that means that anything that is not in accord is a cancer Right, and uh, if there's sin there, it could destroy the entire accord. Exactly, you, you can't have sin in the midst of one accord. So uh, they are all in one accord, and then this happens, and then they are not, uh, uh, Ananias and Sapphira are not in one accord here. In fact, they're threatening right. the unity mm. of the church right here. Exactly, and um, so all God God had to do something with exactly. that. Otherwise, it would have just spread and. It would have impacted. So do y'all understand that? Yeah. Garfield. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the event in the Old Testament when Moses and Korah and Adam and Abihu, they wanted to um, go against Moses. Mm -hmm. And um, the power of God was there. Right. And to show these people that it wasn't just um, normal men they were dealing with, but God's presence. Right. Now, when they came, fire had to devour them. Right. And the earth had to open up. And this is the same scenario in the New Testament with Peter, because these people thought they were just dealing with mere human beings, but they did not know that these human beings were endowed with the Spirit of God. Absolutely. So, when they were thinking they were lying to a common man, yeah. the Spirit of not God lied to man. immediately <laughs> Absolutely. Them. Fear of God. God was trying to put the fear of God in them. Absolutely. So they understand that these are not just regular men, but men it's who real. Have the Spirit of that's God right. working with them. That's right. And that's why it's recorded for us is that God was building this church right now. He didn't have time for no mess. He didn't have time for no interference in getting this church right. He needed it to stay clean. That's right. right. All right, we're going to move through. Do you expect something when you come to church? All right, y'all not ready. Okay, Peter. 
Acts 5, 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. This is Peter. By the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord yes. in Solomon's porch. Yes. Acts 5, 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in, in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. When was the last time you was arrested and then freed by an angel? Okay, no comments. <laughs> Act 542, and daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to preach, not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Yes. They cease not to teach and preach the mark of the beast. The 2300 day prophecy, no. dress reform. <laughs> now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be talking about those things. We should know the mark of the beast. We should know the 2300 day prophecy. We should know and be about dress reform. But there's something That's about right. preaching That's and right. teaching Christ That's right. that does something to people That's right. more than any more than any other doctrine in the Bible. That's right. Stephen. Now, this is the Acts of the Apostles. I don't even... Can I get, like, ten more of y'all minutes? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Okay, Stephen was stoned for a straight testimony. In Acts 7, let's start in 54. So, Stephen basically gives them a whole rundown of the history of the church. And they weren't having it. So in 54, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of who? Looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. <laughs> this is the dark side. And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And they witnessed, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Mercy. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So the stoning didn't even kill Stephen. And I believe, this is just my personal belief, that God gives a special Holy Spirit power to martyrs. Yes, yes. Now, remember the definition of witnesses. One was a martyr. Now, in under persecution, can we, like Stephen, ask God not to lay this charge at our persecutors? Mm -hmm. People that's trying to kill you, can we say, God, forgive them. Don't, don't hold this against them. Can we do that when somebody's trying to kill us? Amen. What about when somebody's trying to kill your baby girl, Amen. your child? Can we say, Lord, lay not this charge at their feet? This is ordinary Christianity. This is ordinary Christianity. Do you win? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Acts 8, 17. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. When was the last time you laid your hands on somebody and they got the Holy Ghost? And not the counterfeit, the real deal. It's ordinary Christianity. Have you received the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Don't answer. Because I'll challenge you. <laughs> I will challenge you. Philip. Acts 8, 20, let's start in 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise. Who, who spake unto Philip? The angel of the Lord. Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is a desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopian, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, just a quick little side note. Philip was sent to a man who was in charge of all the money of the queen. Now, just imagine if this man went back to the queen with the testimony of Christ and all of that money 
at, at the disposal of God. Okay, we'll keep reading. Okay, verse 28. Was returning and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet. Then, then the spirit, who? The spirit. Said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? When was the last time the angel of the Lord commanded you to do something? When was the last time you heard audibly the Holy Spirit? It's ordinary Christianity. Acts 9. We'll start in verse... I'll read verse 40. You don't have to go there. But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed and turning him to the body said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Mm. Now, just some brief context. They were all complaining about how Tabitha had died and how important she was to, to everybody. But when Peter came into the room, he kicked everybody else out. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Naysayers. Naysayers. Why else? Doubters. Hmm? Doubters. Doubters. Absolutely. Now understand the context of that. If you were in some room and you believe that God can heal somebody, but not everybody in there believe that, mm. they got to go. Paul, I'll read in Acts 14. I'll start in verse 8. And there sat a certain man in Lystra, impotent in his feet, being a cripple from his mother's womb, whom never who never had walked, the same heard Paul speak, who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed, said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. And he leaped and walked. And when the people saw that what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of the Lycaonia, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Now, the thing I want to bring out is in verse 9. Right when it talks about Paul, who steadfastly beholding him, Paul perceived that he had faith to be healed. Mm. Can we tell if somebody has a faith to be healed? Can we perceive somebody and say, oh, yeah, you got that faith? This is ordinary Christianity. Paul was able to do that, to look at somebody who's like, yeah, you got faith. You can be healed. My last slide. What did the old church have that we didn't have, that we don't have? Or let me let me rephrase that. Do we have more than what the old church had? Mm, it's quiet. The old church didn't even have the New Testament. We got all of their examples. They didn't have that example. What else are we missing out on? The latter rain. But before the latter rain, we had to be of one mind and of one accord and, and to get the early rain, <laughs> even the early rain. So my appeal, matter of fact, let's all bow our heads. My appeal is if you want to know more about Christ or maybe you know Christ and you've been slipping and falling and you've just been struggling. Come, come back to Christ. My appeal is that you come back to Christ, that you come to Christ and get some of this power. Get this power that he has, that the apostles of old had, that the disciples of old had, that's still available to us now. Amen. We have to believe that, church. Christ said, with a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. Do we believe that? The power of God is possible. Nothing is impossible. My next accord, my next appeal is, a, is more so of a challenge for just this next week. I challenge, I challenge all of us in our morning prayers that we pray that all of us in this building be on one accord. That's it. I just pray that you mention it in your morning prayer. Lord, help us all be on one accord. Help us all be of one mind. Help us all be of one aim and goal. And doing your will. And I believe that. Like come on y'all. God wants to drop his Holy Spirit on us. Amen. Why would he not? Why would he withhold it? Let us pray. Bless Heavenly Father Lord. 
You said, if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more should your Holy Father give the Holy Spirit to them to ask him? Lord, we're asking, Father. Lord, we ask that whatever differences that we have, differences in opinions that conflict with your word, that conflict with the goal, Lord, I ask that you reveal them to us, Lord, and give us the power to remove it, Lord. I ask, Father, if there's anything else in our lives that's keeping us from doing your work, keeping us from being on one accord, keeping us from being mighty in your word, keeping us from receiving the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, reveal it unto us, God, and give us power to remove it, Lord. I ask that you continue to be with us, Lord. All of us, those who want to appeal, Lord, those who want to pray that we be on one accord, Lord, give us the power Give us the understanding, give us the know-how, Lord, of how to be holy, of how to be like Christ. Lord, that's where you set the bar, Lord. You told us, you commanded us to be perfect, even as you are perfect. We can't do that in our own strength, Lord, and we know it. But we shouldn't be discouraged because we know you. And we know Christ, Lord. We just ask that you have your own way with this congregation, Father. That a big light may be in this city, Lord. In this darkness of this city, a big light can come from west side, Lord. That can come from us. Make it happen, Father. For your own glory, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.